Hello and welcome, this is Agent XP, and welcome back to another author playthrough. This is my 16th TRLE and another One Room Challenge level. This is for the One Room Challenge Competition 2021. I have released a total of four One Room Challenges and this being my fourth example. It was slightly different this time around. Because we were allowed to use the newer Tomb Editor, we could actually make the One Room slightly larger than previously. So we were allowed a space of 25 by 25 blocks in the editor. The use of Tomb Editor also meant that we weren't limited in the amount of objects we could place in the single room. However, this presented its own challenges, which I'll talk about a bit later. But we are going to start now, and I'm going to select the Legend outfit. And we're greeted with a short cutscene to start off the level. Lara is at the Museum of Egyptian Adventure in Cairo. And this is where the story begins. Hmm, scares the kids, I suppose. What's this? An ancient scroll. This tells of the Pyramid of the Beetle. A fabled tomb rumoured to be filled with traps and snares. Sounds like a perfect afternoon out. Oh, Winston. Pull yourself together, ma'am. Oh dear, <laughs> poor Winston. I originally did want him to hide behind his tray instead of fall over, but I couldn't find the animation for that, so I had him faint instead. <laughs> and so, later that day, we join Lara inside the Pyramid of the Beetle. And this opening area was very much inspired by the opening section of Tomb Raider Anniversary Egypt. So if we look up here to the right, we can see a hidden jump switch, and I'm going to pull that, and that's actually going to reveal a secret. But our next order of business is to work out how to get up to that ledge. And you can see the beetles there on the wall, those are actually going to reveal some poles. But first of all, let us deal with the scorpion and collect a small medkit dropped by this poor unfortunate adventurer and prior visitor to the tomb. He obviously didn't have a very good experience. <laughs> Maybe uh, the scorpion had something to do with it. So we can pull out this block and we're going to need to use this again in just a moment. But if we hop over the block and into the gap that it revealed, we can hop up and pull another jump switch. And this is going to extend some poles and lower the block in the wall. Now we're going to need to use the block again. No, Lara, don't climb up. Let's push it forward one more tile. And we can then use this block to jump and grab a crack in the wall in front of us. So if we can see it there, there is a crack and we can use this to shimmy along this rocky ledge. And from the end, we can do one of the legend moves, a back hop off that ledge, grab the poles and swing to the other side. We are now in a position to collect the first secret of the level and here we will find a shotgun. This might come in handy later. So let's run through the gap that we opened and we find ourselves in quite a small room and if we take a look around there are some blocks in front of us that we need to open. 
And above us, there are some monkey bars. And there are two slopes which will allow us to reach the monkey bars. So if we jump forward onto the first slope, we can then jump off the second slope and grab the bars. So swing to the end and drop onto the ledge. Here we will be greeted with a sneak preview of an area that we will visit later. Don't rush around the corner, however, as there are some clang clang doors. It wouldn't be easy without some clack clack doors, right? <laughs> Harking back to Tomb Raider 1, so try not to get squished by those. And we've now opened up the blocks at the end of this room. So hop on up onto this ledge and then drop through to the other side. We are greeted with an epic flyby showing the main area of the level. Those of you who have played Tomb Raider 4 might recognise the beetle pyramid in the centre of the room there, implying that we need to find four beetles. You may also have heard of the patter patter of footsteps, and that is a pesky crocodile, so we'll dispatch him. Uh, about half of the time he seems to like to get stuck in that palm tree for whatever reason. I can't seem to solve that issue. That's just Tomb Raider 4 AI, unfortunately. So if we stand on that central platform, we will get a camera hint showing this skeleton. And pressing action causes Lara to pull out the skeleton. And it seems he dropped to some rather handy items. And I don't think he'll be needing them anymore, so let's collect them. One of the items is a crowbar. And if you look up to the right there, you may notice on the pillar with the obelisk in the center of the room, there were a bunch of beetles and we're going to need the crowbar in order to prise those off. However, we're first going to need to find a way to reach them. Speaking of reaching things, there is a push block on this ledge and pushing this twice will allow us to gain access to the upper ledge. However, be careful when you push it the second time, the jackal behind us will wake up. He isn't too fond of us moving his block, apparently. So dispatch of the jackal before he surprises you from behind. And now we can jump up to the ledge and we're greeted by a couple of his friends who aren't too happy to see us. So make sure you're ready to greet them when you arrive on the ledge and then we can take a look around. So if we run along this ledge, we'll be greeted by a message. Lara thinks that block looks movable. I wonder if it can be pushed from the other side. So if we look, we can see that the block has a handle on it, which signifies that we can move it, but we can't reach the back of it from here. So that's something to bear in mind for future. So on this ledge, there are two more jackals and they will wake up as you approach them. So make sure that you are ready for them. And we can grab the flares that another unfortunate adventurer dropped. And if we look up, we'll see that there's something on top of the sphinx head. And if we do a jump and grab, we can pull up on top of the sphinx head. And this will allow us to reach a jump switch on the wall. When you pull the jump switch, you'll be shown a flyby. And this shows us that the two blocks either side of the sphinx head have lowered. So we're going to want to reach those two ledges as each one has a switch on it. If we turn to the right, we'll see that there is another push block. And if we grab it, we can pull it out by two. And the reason we want to pull it out by two is because there is actually something hidden behind it. So hop on top of the block and drop down into the alcove that it revealed and we'll find some shotgun ammo. So pull up on top of the block and if we face the ledge behind we can jump to it and pull a switch. This is going to show us that the spikes in the doorway below have been disabled. So that will allow us to enter that room. But we're actually going to save that until later. We can run over here and now deal with the other switch that we were shown when we pulled the jump switch behind the Sphinx. When I designed this area, I intentionally made it non-linear. I wanted the player to be able to choose which order in which to play each small individual section. 
So if we run inside of the room that we just opened, the floor is somewhat ominous and there's a skeleton. And if we look around, there are different colored tiles on the wall and above each is a shoot switch. Now the tiles above the torch on our left show us a sequence. And if we pay attention to this sequence, we will be able to shoot those switches without ending up like our unfortunate friend here who has helpfully left us a gun with a laser sight so we can equip this automatic pistol and I'm actually going to show you what happens if you shoot the switches in the wrong order first. Uh, yes, <laughs> we, we don't want to do that. So I'm going to reload and we will do this sequence in the correct order. So I intentionally kept this puzzle fairly simple. What we want to do is go from left to right. So shoot the left hand dial first and then work your way around the room and shoot each switch. And each one will explode and we will not find ourselves impaled by the spikes. So do each one and just one more, that one's through the cobweb. Shoot that and we're safe. The block at the other end of the room lowers and we're able to use this switch. And this shows us that a door has opened somewhere on the balcony outside. However, before we make a hasty exit, it's worth noting that this block has lowered and this will allow us to use a jump switch. Now, generally speaking, if a switch does not have a camera hint, it means that it relates to a secret. So what that first jump switch did is deactivate a grate, which allows us to use this small gap to hop up and pull a second jump switch, which is very well hidden in the shadows. And we can collect a small med kit that was in that gap. So we're going to drop down and we can hear a block lowering. That means it's fairly nearby. So if we can run outside here, hop to this ledge and we will find that a block has lowered in the wall and this gives us our second secret of the level, the Uzis. So as I said, it's worth bearing in mind if a switch does not have a camera hint, it's very likely that that relates to a secret. So I'm going to run along the balcony and find the door that opened. And if we run down into this room, we want to be prepared to meet some hostiles. There is a jackal running around and several scorpions. So we're going to want to deal with those. Phew, I think that's all of them dealt with. So I'm going to run to the end and take a look at this room. This room was very much inspired by a room in City of Carmoon in Tomb Raider Anniversary, but it also features a nod to the original City of Carmoon in Tomb Raider 1. Both levels featured a hallway with statues sitting in a similar configuration to this. So we can grab the small med kit in that corner and if we pull that switch we will see that the statues move out and this is going to allow us to reach one of the ledges on the opposite wall. So jump to the middle ledge and this will allow us to run jump and grab the lowest of the three ledges on the wall. We need to be fairly snappy doing this as the statues are on a timer. So if we look over to that opposite wall, we saw there a switch, but there is a stream of darts coming across the room. And at the moment, if we try and pull that switch, Lara is going to reach a rather quick demise as those darts are poisonous. So we're going to want to come over to this opposite ledge and pull out this block. And if we pull the block in front of the stream of darts, we will actually prevent the darts from being fired. And this will allow us to then use that switch on the wall opposite safely without getting poisoned. Before we go over there, however, we're going to drop down here and check out this alcove. We will find some more automatic ammo there. So I really like the design of the ledges and the statues in this room. I designed the moving statue puzzle to resemble the one in Tomb Raider Anniversary as this is a feature I always liked. 
So let's traverse the platforms and jump over to this switch. Now when we pull the switch we are going to wake up a flying sand beetle. So we're going to want to take out a powerful weapon and quickly dispatch him before he decides to troll us as we are jumping to the higher ledges. So pull the switch a second time, as we saw there it was on a timer, and we have just enough time to use this block to grab the upper ledge. If we turn around we will see that there is a ledge that we can grab directly behind us. So pull up and we can do another jump and grab this jump switch. Now this jump switch activates a rope in the centre of the room, and we can do a run jump and grab straight from that ledge in order to grab said rope and we can use the rope to swing to this ledge and pull a second jump switch. We'll be shown a camera of a block lowering on the ledge directly below us. But now we have a dilemma. How do we climb down from this ledge? Well, the best way by far is to use the rope. And I'm going to do a little trick here where I save and reload because we need to wait for the rope to stop swinging. But if we save and reload, this will reset the rope to its original position and it will be much easier for us to grab it. So we can swing to this platform and then drop down safely onto one of the ledges below. And we can now do a running jump back to this platform platform and use this switch. So as we pull this switch we'll be shown that a block raises around the obelisk back in the central room. This will allow us to collect one of the beetles. However we were also shown a second camera and this is very important. For this we're going to want to traverse back to the opposite ledge and if we hop over we'll see that a block has lowered in this corner and remember the hint that Lara gave us earlier about that block? Well we can now push it from behind and this is going to allow us to reach this upper leafy ledge. Use the block to hop up to the ledge and note the torch on the wall there. We're going to need to come back to that later. But first we pulled a very sneaky hidden switch and we didn't get a camera hint from that which implies that it is a secret. We were also able to shoot some pots which gave us some more ammo. But don't forget those torches, we will need to come back to those later. So first we're going to run around this ledge and before we go and collect the secret that we opened we are going to stop off at this room. We will need to dispatch the jackal and in doing so we accidentally shattered a pot in the center of the room and this revealed a crowbar switch. As we use this crowbar switch we will seal ourselves in the room and oh no we woke up a bunch of mummies and they are not too pleased to see us. However, Lara tells us that they are only held together by bandages and that a few bullets might put them out of their misery, so it is worth pulling out a more powerful weapon. Pistols will do, it will just take a bit longer, and we can dispatch those mummies before they get too close to us. Next, we can use the block that lowered in order to traverse higher in the room. We'll now find ourselves next to the grate with the mirror behind it, which we looked through right at the start of the level. So if we traverse across the room we can find a switch in this alcove. If we pull it we can hear that things have started to get a little more interesting. So go back to this ledge and roll and we can jump to the ledge to the right and we will see that a ton of blades have activated. Now this is harking back to Tomb Raider Anniversary. However, without the annoying wall runs, I really did not like those in Obelisk of Carmoon, but the blades on their own are kind of fun to avoid. So we'll need to traverse the ledges, carefully timing the blades, and it is possible to hop past all of them without taking damage if you time it correctly. So eventually we'll be able to hop up to this top ledge and we'll see another poor unfortunate adventurer who wasn't as lucky as us and we can collect the large medkit that he dropped. Is this a sign of things to come? 
well we can use the pole to hop forward onto this ledge and if we look up we will see a jump switch guarded by a much loved lost library cog if we time the jump for when the cog is coming towards us on the left hand side we can avoid taking any damage the camera showed us that pulling the switch raised another beetle block and it also opened the exit block to this room so now we're going to want to safely descend to the lower levels all of the blade traps have now been safely deactivated so we don't need to worry about anything except for this mummy that is waiting to greet us back on the ground floor I had a lot of fun with this room as you might tell, especially the lost library cog, that was kind of evil, but you can avoid all of the traps without taking any damage if you are nifty. So next it's time for us to claim that secret that we opened. If we look carefully over in the corner we'll see that a block has lowered and we can run jump and grab this pillar which now has a gap in it which reveals the secret. So pick up the items which are a large med kit and two lots of automatic ammo. So we have now taken care of a lot of the tasks that were off this balcony. The only things that remain in this room are the upper ledges, but we can't yet access those. So next I'm going to dive down into the pool, because this remains unexplored. I designed this underwater section to resemble the city and obelisk of Carmoon sections, which have lots of little openings going off them and nooks to explore. Beware whenever you see a skull texture by the way, as that generally indicates danger, so there was a blade guarding that alcove. There are lots of underwater switches for us to find. That particular switch lowered a block to our right, but first of all we're going to want to go up and get air, and I often like to climb out of the water as this resets Lara's air bar quickly. So let's dive back down and investigate the block that lowered. I'm going to save my game before I swim in here. As the panic music would indicate, there is danger. The spike floor below us is slowly raising, and we have just enough time to pull the three underwater switches. Each underwater switch will retract the blades that are guarding the switch that is further up. Be careful not to swim into the spike ceiling though. And when we pull the third switch, it will open a block. This will allow us to leave. As you could see there, the spike floor really isn't that fast. It's just there to make you panic, basically. So we can climb out here and the light attracts us to this pedestal. And if we grab the item on the pedestal, we will see that it is a winding key for a clockwork scarab. We can see through into an area that we haven't visited yet, but before we leave we're going to want to return to the opening where we escaped the raising spike floor. As you can see there it's pretty slow, it still hasn't quite made its way up to the top of the room yet. We're going to want to wait for it to get out of the way, as if we swim underneath it we will find another secret. This is a very sneaky secret when well, I thought it was a good hiding place. So we can now exit that room and through the block that lowered and to our right there is a block we're going to want to note as there are three switches to open this block. If we use this block that lowered we can claim a small med kit that is basically a safe shortcut so we can avoid the blade. So climb out of the water to reset Lara's air bar and we're now going to start to find the three switches that control that block that we can still see through the grating, it's highlighted there in the red. So if we swim up to this alcove we can use the first of three switches which will open that block. Swim back out of this room and as you saw there is quite easy to swim directly underneath the blades. They will only do you any damage if you forget about them basically. Those blades are quite easy to avoid. 
Not so much the case with these blades, though. You're going to want to wait until they open and close twice, and use the longer gap to swim through them. And in this room, you'll find yourself surrounded by spikes, so be very careful. It is possible to swim directly under the spikes in the ceiling through a safe gap. So you don't have to wait to time your way past the ceiling spikes. You can use the gap but be careful not to scrape any of the spikes on your way through. So swimming through the block that opened, we will find another of the ceiling switches that is responsible for that block, and we can quickly grab a small med kit. Sometimes that one's a bit difficult to pick up for whatever reason, but we got it there, and we want to make a hasty exit and grab some more air. I'm just going to climb right out to reset my air bar once more. And we can now swim into this hallway. There is a current in this hallway, and it pulls you towards those spikes. However, it's quite easy to fight it because it is quite a slow current. So as you saw there, I swam through the opening on the left of the spikes, made my way down that hallway, and pulled the final switch, which lowered that block. There is a quick way out of that section, so you don't have to swim back past the spikes. And once again, I am going to collect some more air. Now I am going to investigate that block which we finally lowered with the three switches. So I'm going to swim down to this opening, I'll be greeted by some blades, but once again we can just swim underneath them. And I'm going to swim into this flooded hallway. I absolutely love this room, it's one of my favourite parts of the level. I just love the atmosphere in here. So we're going to want to take a look around. There is an air pocket, as was indicated by the light rays, that's in the centre of the room, so we can easily go and get air if we need it. I'm just going to pick up a couple of items, and if we look we can see switches, but there are ominous skulls above them, so we're not going to want to touch either of those side switches. It's only the switch in the middle that we're going to want to use. So I'm going to swim up and replenish my air. Once we've done that, we're going to want to swim back down into the depths, and we can pick up one more item from this ledge, some more Uzi ammo. I'm actually going to just top up my air so it's right back to the top, as we're now going to want to tackle the puzzle in this room. So if we swim to the end of the room and use this switch, we'll see the block at the far end of the room open. Now this switch is not timed, but there is something that we want to pay attention to in this room. If we look carefully at the floor, we will see that there is a track or channel in the floor. And we're going to want to follow this channel, and if we swim to the end, there is a partly hidden tile. If we swim over that feather tile, we are going to open up a secret. We'll need to carefully time our way past the blade and be very careful rounding that corner, as where the sand pile is, it's quite easy to clip the edge. And if we accidentally leave the channel, the block at the end of the room will close and so will the secret. However, as you saw there, the air pocket was all on safe tiles, so you can safely get air. Speaking of air, as we enter this new room, Lara will point out another air pocket. Pocket, which is just as well as the entrance block will close behind us, sealing us in this new area. Now you may notice there is a ceiling switch above the statue at the end, and there are also stars in the ceiling of different colours and markings on the wall, but we'll come to those in a second. First of all we're going to claim the secret that we opened by crossing that concealed feather tile. And once we have got the secret, we can swim up and pull that switch by the statue. And when we do this, we're going to open up some blocks in the room. And you're going to love me for this. <laughs> there are two of these underwater blades. I must say I do find those easier to avoid than those underwater closing doors. But that's just my preference. <laughs> 
So let's go back down and tackle these two blade traps. They're not too bad if you save your game and time it for when they open and close twice, they then stay open slightly longer. So swim through and pull the underwater switch and then save again and time your way back out. And we can probably go and do the next one without getting more air. Yes, I think we have enough. So let's swim over here and time our way through the second blade. Once we have pulled these two switches, we'll be greeted by some music. Ooh, I wonder what happened. We'll save our game and swim back into the room. And we will see on the obelisks in the center of the room, a light appearing and disappearing on each obelisk in turn. And this light changes color depending on which obelisk it appears above. But before we look at that anymore, we're just going to want to top up our air. This puzzle was heavily inspired by a puzzle in a Tomb Raider AOD, which was located in the Hall of Seasons. So the artifact makes its way between each of the obelisks, and that is the part that was inspired by AOD. When it's above all but one obelisk, the artifact glows red, and we want to look at the wall tiles and the stars and find the obelisk above which the artifact appears blue and this tells us that it is safe to grab the artifact. If we try picking it up from one of the other obelisks then Lara is going to get killed. So we can now exit that room. It now no longer matters if we leave the channel on the floor as we have completed the puzzle in that room. So let's collect some more air and we can now go and investigate the second camera hint that we were shown when we picked up the artifact. This is back in the main room and it was showing us where we need to place the artifact. I'm just going up to replenish my air here and let's jump back down into the water and investigate this puzzle hole located on the central pillar in the main underwater area. So press action when you swim up to this receptacle and Lara will place the scarab talisman. This lowers a block which allows you to pull a switch and we will get a camera showing us that the block beneath the sphinx has finally lowered. So let's swim up and investigate the path through the Sphinx. So climb up here and we can run into this hallway and we will now find ourselves on the opposite side of the grate where we found the scarab winding key. And there is a hallway in this direction but if we look at the ground we can see that there are spike traps and we're actually going to need a mechanical scarab in order to deactivate those spikes before we can safely cross. And we already have the winding key Key, all we need to do is find the scarab itself. But as you can see, I also claimed a burning torch. We're going to need to find somewhere to light that. But first, I dropped the torch somewhere safe and I decided to climb up and use the crowbar to claim the two beetles that we currently have access to. So I'm going to follow the obelisk around and use the two blocks that we've currently raised to pry each of these beetles off the wall. Now we can return our attention to lighting the torch. So we're going to hop up to this ledge and pick up the torch once again and use the block in order to hop back up to the upper section. And we can see the torches on the wall there, but where are we going to get fire from? It is actually very nearby. If we run back into the spike room, there is a torch on the wall that was illuminating our clue from that earlier puzzle. So now that we've lit the torch, we can light the other four torches out on the balcony. If you're wondering why we didn't use the torch that we saw earlier when we picked up the torch item, that's because it was A, too high, and B, it was also above the spikes, so we couldn't have used that one. So light 
the last torch here on the wall and we should get a camera showing us that a block lowers in the corner. We now have no further use for the torch so just drop it on the ground and we can jump to this ledge. On this ledge we'll find some handy automatic ammo and we're actually going to need to use that here in a moment. If we look up we can see a ledge so grab the nearest corner of it and we should be able to pull ourselves up. From here we have a great view of the central pyramid structure. The fact that this ended up looking like a pyramid was kind of a happy accident and it very much reminds me of the great pyramid structure from Tomb Raider 1. The fact that we could use larger rooms in this one room challenge as well as place unlimited objects did provide some issues in terms of lag in this level. Great care was taken to optimise it as well as possible and it now runs pretty well on my system but hopefully that is true for everyone else playing as well. Here we're shown a camera hint of a globe above and if we shoot it it will reveal a rope. This will allow us to swing to the first of the upper platforms. The reason that lag was such a problem in this A one room level specifically is because all of the objects are within a single room. So even if you can't see some parts of the level, they are still being rendered. And great care was taken to try and circumvent this. However, at the end of the day, it's just an old engine and it wasn't really designed for this many HD objects in one space. But but I don't like to compromise on visuals either, so hopefully with all the fixing, a balance was found between the two things. The level should still be playable on most systems. So pulling that switch, we now see a rope has appeared in the center of the room. So we're going to want to hop back past that blade and make our way around this ledge. We can hopefully crawl under the eaves. Lara is not being very cooperative there. And if we crawl to the corner of this ledge, we can reach that second rope. Now the purpose of this rope is to allow us to reach the two highest platforms on each side of the room and it may not look like you can reach them but you can with the rope. So let's face the first of the two platforms and give ourselves a bit of momentum and we should be able to pick up enough speed so that we can jump up and grab this platform. So run over and pull this switch and we'll see the third beetle ledge has raised to allow us to grab that beetle on the central obelisk. So we can run, jump and grab the rope from here. Again, it kind of looks like it's too far, but you can actually grab it. It might be worth using the trick that I showed you earlier with the saving and reloading to get the rope back to its original position. Sometimes that helps in grabbing it. But we grabbed it that time and we were able to swing to the final platform and we can now pull this switch and raise the final block around the obelisk. We can now claim all four of the beetles. And now for one of my favorite moments in the level, we can do a dive right down into the pool below. I love that, jumping right from the very top of the level and diving into the pool below. And as we land, it seems we woke up the two jackals that were at the side of the pool there. That one seems to have found a wall. Speaking of which, we also found a wall there. <laughs> Let's kill that jackal so that it won't hassle us as we are claiming the final beetles. So let's run around the central obelisk and use the crowbar on these final two beetles. And we can then go and activate the pyramid in the center of the room. I thought it was really cool to use these objects. You don't see them used in that many custom levels. Although it has to be said, I had a bit of a nightmare when setting up that pyramid in the center of the room. The collision on it seemed rather strange and even when it was active, there were still invisible walls left 
that is why the final artifact is levitating but I think it did still look pretty cool because I kept having weird collision left. I think perhaps this object works better in the original level editor than it does in tomb editor because I had a lot of issues with it. But as we place each beetle we can see a lightning beam coming from each of the four corners of the room to activate the pyramid and once all four lightning beams are in place the middle of the pyramid elevates and shows us a clockwork scarab beetle and we can claim that and we can now finally access that hallway with the spikes so we're going to go to our inventory and combine the winding key with the mechanical scarab so we now have mechanical scarab plus winding key so let's save our game and return to the hallway where the spikes are located so let's drop down here be careful not to land on top of the spikes if we land on the beetle tile we can now use our newfound beetle to deactivate the spikes for us so let's see it go there it's a little bit slow let's wait for it to get into position and it will now nicely deactivate all of those spikes for us so if we run to the end of the hallway don't forget to pick up the beetle as you will need that later on in the level so we are greeted with this flooded cave with a waterfall and i absolutely love this waterfall and the reflection effects in this cave so let's jump in the water, that certainly looks inviting. And if we swim to this dark corner, we can pick up a small med kit before continuing our journey through the level. So if we turn our attention to this hallway, I'm going to save before I enter as this is quite a difficult trap. So we're going to want to time our way past these squishy blocks. Be careful not to swim off that safe towel until you have enough momentum. As soon as you hit the tile of the second block, some blocks will come crashing down from the ceiling on that safe tile. With the epic music, we find ourselves in a large area which is very much modelled on Sanctuary of the Skion in Tomb Raider 1 and Anniversary. I just love this room. So if we pull up into this area with the light ray, Lara tells us that she thinks there is something through that gap but we can't reach it yet as the gap is too narrow so we want to note that for later so we're going to return to this sanctuary of the skion-esque water room and pull out on the ledge at the top and there are a few areas we want to explore here. If we jump to this ledge, there is a door on the opposite side. There are a couple of blocks that are raised. And if we look upwards, we will see a switch above us. So here we can utilize our legend style moves. We can grab the crack and we can jump up to grab the jump switch. And pulling that jump switch lowers a block on the opposite side of the pool. So hop on over using the leafy ledges and behind the palm tree we will find another alcove which has opened so I pull this switch and a block will lower under the water and we'll be shown that another block has lowered in the corner of the room but we're going to ignore that for just a moment and swim over to this switch when we pull this switch we are going to wind up flooding the room and Lara tells us that we had better hurry if we want to explore and that we can pull the switch again if we need air. So remember that area where we saw an artifact? We can now swim through the gap and claim that artifact and from there I am going to return to the flood switch and pull it again so that we can get air. Now the quickest place to actually get air is to return to that artifact alcove and if we swim up to this air pocket it's a lot nearer than swimming to the main air pocket in the room and it's also quicker to get to the switch from there so if you're struggling for air then it's a good idea to use that air pocket as a base. 
So we can pull the switch again and we can now explore further up in that room. And we can now investigate the alcove which I said we were going to ignore for a moment. Now we can investigate it and it contains an underwater switch. So we can now pull that underwater switch which is cool and that's going to open a door but we are going to wait before investigating that hallway as we don't need to do it when the room is flooded. Now that we've opened the door we can go in there when the room is dry and this is probably the most difficult swim. We can swim back here. We are quite tight for air here but we should have just enough time to pull this switch and then return to that artifact alcove that I mentioned as it's just that little bit nearer. If you notice a delay on being able to use action and enter after pulling that switch, I did that intentionally so that you couldn't pull the switch again too soon and break the puzzle. And ideally I would have put an air pocket at the top of the room but because this is a one room challenge level I couldn't do that unfortunately. So if we swim down here into the base of the room, we can collect a secret. Now sometimes Lara is a bit stubborn in grabbing these items, but if you persist, usually she will pick them up. And we can see there the drains, and that block raises and lowers. It lowers when you pull the flood switch, and that basically allows the water to fill the room through those grates. So we can pull the switch again and now we can return to the surface of the water and climb out. We no longer need to use that flood switch. We are done with the flooding aspect of this room. If we jump to this ledge we can investigate this hallway, be very careful dropping down as there are more spikes and it's difficult to see them because there's a cobweb so watch you don't run into them. That's a nifty little trap there. We can now use our our handy clockwork scarab a second time in order to deactivate the spikes. And as we see here when we do we are greeted by a couple of scorpions so be ready to dispatch those and don't forget to pick up the clockwork scarab again. We're not going to use it a second time but it's better if you pick it up as it can sometimes cause bugs if you leave it in the level. So place the timeless sands on the statue and we will see the block lower on the other side of the room and that reveals the final area of the level. So pull back up and we can make our way across the pool and over to that block. Now I have had some problems where the collision on this block remains even after it has been lowered. If this happens, a save and reload will usually fix the issue, but it's not really something I was able to solve completely. The last few times I tested it didn't give an issue, so hopefully it won't give all of you an issue as well, but if it does, save and reload. As we run into the room, we can kill a scorpion, and if we investigate behind that pillar we will find some ammo. Shooting this vase also yields a large med kit. Do all these pickups serve as a warning? Well they kind of do. They are there so that you can replenish your stocks ready for the final battle. As we run forward the sarcophagi ahead of us explode and reveal a two bosses. So we're going to want to use a powerful weapon and continue to leap around and don't forget to heal because they do a lot of damage. To make matters worse, the mummies in the sarcophagi around are also woken by the battle and they come to join in the fight, so make sure they don't sneak up behind you when you are trying to dispatch the main bosses. And also don't forget to heal. As I play on the keyboard, I have the handy heal shortcut keys, so I am making full use of those. So finally, the boss fight is over, or is it? Not quite. As you pick up each of the artifacts dropped by those bosses, another mummy will wake up for good measure, so be ready to dispatch those. 
So once we have both of the artifacts dropped by the bosses, we will now be able to reveal the final artifact. But we're not quite done with this room. If we look up, there are a series of ladders above the pillars. And if we come over to this corner, there is a piece of sand that will allow us to grab this broken pillar. So we can now do a backflip to grab this broken pillar and then then we can jump backwards and utilize the grooves on the top of this pillar to climb around it. And from here we can leap backwards and find ourselves on a ledge. And if we carefully step around this statue we will notice there is something behind it. So we can push the statue and reveal a puzzle hole in which we can place one of the artifacts that we picked up. So place the pharaoh's knot in this tile and we can then jump to the broken pillar in the middle of the room. Now from there if we turn to the left we can shoot a vase. This will reveal some ammo. Now this was more for before the fight in case people were short of ammo as they would have been able to reach that ledge without activating the boss. But at this stage we have now killed all the enemies and we no longer need any ammo. So I am going to place the pharaoh's pillar and this causes a block to lower behind us which reveals the final artifact. So from here we can easily hop to the ledge with the ark and claim our final prize. Now if you did fall down in the meantime there is some sand on the floor which would have allowed us to climb to the ark ledge also. So from here I'm going to jump and grab this pillar and shimmy around and then I am going to climb down a couple of notches on the ladder and then from there grab the opposite ladder, shimmy around the corner and once Lara has her footing I'm going to backflip onto the ledge behind. And here we see the exit to the tomb but don't be too hasty there is a spike trap between us and the exit so leap over that and run up the slope to end the level. Ah, good Winston, you brought the camels. That was an excellent raid and some exquisite prizes for my trophy room. But time to go home. Ooh. So here we have my final stats. It takes me just under an hour to complete the level and I found all six of the secrets. I also used a couple of health packs during that final boss fight, but if you're nifty I'm sure it's possible to complete this level without using any health packs. So that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this author playthrough and I also hope you enjoy playing this level yourself. I will include a download link in the description below so that anyone who wants to download and play this level can do so. But if you have enjoyed this author playthrough, please do consider giving me a like and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please do hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload future videos. This is Agent XP. Thank you for watching and TTFN.